Welcome to One Down Dog On Demand. This is a 45-minute chair class. First ever. That's exciting. Um, my name is Armin. And if you don't have, if you don't have like a yoga chair, you're going to be OK. And let me tell you why. Because basically, about 80% of the postures will um, not require a yoga chair. Even the final posture, you might get by with a, you know, a sturdy, good chair um, that's you know, not going to fall on you. You want to make sure you have a sturdy chair, not a broken chair. Um, it, can be, it can be a wooden chair. Just make it flat. Just make it flat. This is not going to be as low tech, but I'm going to give low tech prop options. What that means is I, I would love for you to grab two blankets of the same size. So these are, for example, the Manduka blankets that we have at the studios. Um, check it out. I'm going to fold it in a way where eventually, you know, you want to pretend as if you are folding the blankets for like retail. You want to be like a retail salesperson right now. Be really picky. You got, you got to be really picky with these. Just because we're, do, we're going to do uh, a bridge to shoulder stand practice. I've been promising this, <laughs> I feel like, since uh, I started teaching at One Down Dog to, to the people who've been coming to class. Now here it is. Bridge to shoulder stand. Notice how this is imperfectly perfect, at least there is some level of, um, you know, neatness. Thank you. And then just put that to the side. Let's begin um, not with the chair yet. So this is more of a kind of technical chair thing. But before we get there, how about we just extend the legs out into Upavishta Konasana. You know, if, this, if you're in the tight hamstring club, I get it. I get it. Just go ahead and bend the knees. If you're like, this is too much, sit upright, as upright as you can without being uptight. Upright, but not uptight. Who wants to be uptight anyway? I don't. Lift the heart, take an inhale. And then you're just going to exhale, fold towards one side, one side of the leg. Not really caring about the breath now. We're just folding. To the side, you know, you can even dance it out. You can just like do spear fingers and then go to the other side, and then spirit fingers go to the other side. <laughs> um, you know, you do you. You can you can do the I don't know. You do you. You do you. I'm gonna do spear fingers. I'm gonna do hearts. You can th throw some hearts out and then go to the other side, and then the other. Ah, and then how about this? How about let's just stay on one side, and then let the head go. You know, if you're like, yeah, good luck with that. Bring a block. Oh, look, you have a chair. Go ahead and bring your chair right over the leg you're folding over, and boom. <sighs> Make sure you've sanitized your chair if someone else has used it. You know, that's the thing we do now. Make sure things are clean. <laughs> just like your blankets, neat. So just let the leg that's, that you're not folding over, just be slack, relaxed, and then just fold completely. Let the shoulders go. Let the jaw be soft. Just getting the hamstrings ready, ready for takeoff. And then once you feel that like breath come in, I'm like, okay, great. Let's go to the other side. You can bring the chair along for the ride. You know, we're bridge to shoulder stand journey today. And then I like to, again, just kind of twist, bring my sternum over towards the leg that I'm folding over. And then the opposite leg would just kind of drop, go slack, and then let go. Without really firming the leg you're going over, just let it be. If you'd like to bring a little bit more firmness to the leg, please. Great. And then let go. Move the chair to the side. And then 
See what feels good for you. I'm going to turn my back so you actually see the postures. Since this is a shoulder um, stand class, let's go ahead and find some mm, awakening of the, of the rotator cuffs. But before that, actually, let's go ahead and do a few cat cows, pressing, to, pressing the inner thumb and index finger, taking an inhale, lifting the head, chin chest up. Exhale, rounding the back, bringing the tailbone towards earth, chin to chest. Good, letting the eyes of the elbows point towards the index fingers, inhaling, lift, head, chin, chest, shoulders back, and then bring the ribs up. And then find some movement, you know, if that means wagging your tail, wag your tail. That means uh, if you just need to shake it out, you can give yourself a little jolt, <laughs> do whatever you need to do. This is just kind of warming us up for the, the, the big finale, the big finale. And then I like to kind of just bring the left palm over towards the right corner side, just to give my side body a stretch. You know, there is this rib opening class. It's a 30 minute chill. It's a good one to take before this class. Let the head go. Soften the tongue. Good, and then press into the, the left knee as the left arm is moving away from the left knee. Good, one more breath. Mm -hmm. Bring the left palm back, inhale, cow pose, exhale, cat, and then come to neutral, bring the right arm over towards the left, slightly bend the left elbow, maybe move the right hip back as you press into the right knee, finding that nice little traction for the side body opening. Letting the breath be, letting the breath breathe. Good. One more breath. And then come back to neutral. Tuck your toes. Grab a hold of the sides of the yoga mat and then pull them actually away from each other. So pull the yoga mat um, as if you're tearing it apart. Got it. And then tuck the toes. Lift the buttocks up. Just a little down dog. Nothing fancy. No, no big deal. It's a no big deal down dog. It doesn't even matter right now. We're just transitioning to grab a hold of our chair. Mm -hmm. And then... Go ahead and walk towards the front of your mat. Let the head go. Bring your palms to your hips and see if you can actually move the elbows up. Lift the toes up, press into the big toe mounds. The big toe mounds, so the big toe, this is the big toe, and this is the big toe mound. Press into that space, good. And then some of you will interlace your fingers, let the arms extend up, and then let the head go. Relaxing the space between the sitting bones as you inhale, widen the low back. Good. One more breath. Shoulders back. And then bend the knees. You can either bend the knees or roll up from straight legs. I like to bend the knees, come into what would be like a utkatasana chair. Lift the arms up as if we're doing the posture of palms to heart. Good. Now grab your chair. Do a little, uh, a few different postures that you normally do in a yoga class, but let's kind of play with the chair here. It's really great if you have access to the, to the top bar here. I like to always recommend bringing your foot to the center of the chair, because if you bring it to the front of the chair, guess what happens? It's gonna flip over. I've, I've fallen off of chairs just because I didn't bring the center of gravity to the center of chair. So as you find stability and safety, check it. Great, stable. Bring the left foot back as if you're doing a lunge. Dance in it, bring the palm down to the bar of the chair. Take an inhale, lift the heart, and then exhale, bend the back knee. Oh, that is the psoas speaking. Inhale, straighten the front leg if you have access to that. And then exhale, bend the front knee. I like to go a little faster. Inhale, straighten, exhale, bend, or even forget about the breathing. I mean, don't forget about the breathing, breathe, but <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't control the breath. Don't manipulate the breath, just like be here. You know, be here now, be with your chair. 
you know, become really intimate with the chair because it's actually going to protect you uh, from, from, you know, all the great dangers. I'm kidding, there are no great dangers. I mean, there are many great dangers, but not on the yoga mat, okay? As long as we're practicing some safety and just straighten the front leg and then the, uh, and then go ahead and bring the right foot down, bring the left knee down, you know, some of you warriors, you can bring the left knee completely down. You know, don't push it, please. You can always pad the back knee. Oh, voila. So if you're here, again, we're not trying to bring the knee down because we haven't done the work for all of us to access bringing the knee down. So if you're accessing it, amazing. If you're not, also amazing. Good. One more breath, and then gently come up. Bring your palms to the side of the chair. Gently get that right foot off of the chair. Little down dog, flat back action. I like to spread my fingers apart. Press the inner palm onto the chair. Let the eyes of the elbow, that's the inner elbow, point up towards sky. Biceps moving towards sky. My friends who need to bend their knees, bend your knees, bring the ribs in, let the head go. Hmm. You know, the beauty, the beauty of the yoga, yeah, you can come back. You can come back to your chair. You can go ahead and arrange this for the other knee. The beauty of the yoga practice, you only have two sides. Thankfully, we're not like, you know, Indian deities with a hundred sides. We only have two sides. So my left foot is on the center of the chair. I bend. I just kind of check the temperature of my outer hip, the temperature of my psoas. The psoas, in my case right now, is the right psoas. That's being activated, stretched. And then... Go for it. No manipulation, no controlling. Just let it be. Folding, straightening, bending, straightening. And then you make that grand decision, am I going to go take the leap? You know, are you going to cross that bridge? Are you going to cross the bridge to shoulder stand today? In fact, you can even not do shoulder stand today and just do all the work for it. So slowly bring the right knee down. Okay, take a few breaths. You know, one becomes breathless with this, <laughs> this sort of work. So soften the toes, let the sitting bones relax. Great. Feeling a little bit of sweat. I wasn't planning on sweating. I hope. You were. <laughs> Great. And then bring the palms to the side of the chair. Lift the back knee up. Straighten the front leg. And then how about this? How about we bring both knees down this time, doing a little child's pose variation slash heart opener. I like to take the blanket further back. Stack my hips over the knees. Making sure that the chair is always actually on the sticky mat because we don't want it to leave us. We want it to be with us through the practice. Go ahead and bring the elbows down onto the chair. You can bring the palms together, but if that's too much work for you, bring both palms to either side of the chair as you fold into like a little child's pose slash puppy dog variation. I like to bring my forehead on the chair, on the seat of the chair. Take a few breaths, and then gently come out of that. Great. How about some twists? Some chair twists. It's easy. Easy chair twists. 
let's start sitting on, so take a look. The front edge of the seat is facing the long edge of the mat, for example. You're sitting on the side. You're not sitting, you know, you're not sitting the way you would normally sit on a chair. You're sitting the way you would not normally sit on a chair. So imagine as if the movie's here, you know, the drama is happening right here, not here, here. <laughs> Lift arms up, go up, inhale. And then exhale, if you're seated on the right side of the chair, you're twisting towards the bar. For me, it's to the right. Let the shoulders go. Breathing in. Now, the arm that is closer to your abdomen, you're going to pull with that palm. You're going to pull the bar towards the abdomen. And with the palm that is not close to the abdomen, you're pushing the bar as you twist, twist, twist towards the bar behind you. Let the shoulders go. The shoulders have the tendency of lifting up here. Just let them be. Let them be going down. <laughs> Don't let them be going up. Great. A few more. So good. And then, for me, it's the right palm. It is not the palm that is closer to my abdomen. I'm bringing that arm behind me, as if you're doing um, gomukhasana. Yeah, that's usually uh, the cow face pose. Uh, let's not complicate this. You know, let's just go ahead and bring that palm to the outer hip, opening up the shoulder. The right shoulder moves back, looking towards the right shoulder, letting the left shoulder descend, soften the tongue. Let it be one more breath. <sighs> Great. And then I come back to center. So here it is. So if I'm sitting on the right side of history, I mean, on the right side of, um, of, of the chair, like this way. I'm looking straight forward. Now I'm moving, I'm moving towards the left. We did the right side. So as we move on to the left, more instructions here in terms of how we're seated. Get the knees stacked right above the heels. Take an inhale, reach the arms up, go wide, and then exhale, twist, twist, twist towards the left. Let the shoulders soften. Again, you're pulling with the right palm, you're pushing with the left. You know, no real reason to go um, too <laughs> harsh on the first twist. You have about four breaths here. So maybe a few millil milliliters, uh, millimeters or uh, inches on each exhalation, twisting towards the back bar. In fact, many of you know I like to exhale, complete the exhalation. On empty, twist a little bit, and then inhale again. That's about four to five breaths. Extend that back arm, or the left arm in this case, over towards the outer right hip. Lift the sternal notch, the front of the sternum, and then as you pull the bar towards you, you're twisting more and more and more. Let the shoulders descend. Three more breaths. So here you are bringing a little bit more of an attention to your breath rather than just letting the breath breathe in our lunges. Good. One more. Mm. And then come back to center. Now if you've been sweating, that's great because I do need a little bit of sweat as we go into, into uh, our bridge and then eventually shoulder stand, just so the muscles are, are ready, they're ripe. Grab a hold of the side of the chair if you have access to that. Here, the, the tendency is for the shoulder head to, to move forward. So what we're trying to do is really extend and lengthen the pectoralis, the chest muscle. Just care by heart. Open up the chest. Power Rangers. Whatever works for you, just open up the heart. Hmm. And then maybe some of you will interlace the fingers behind you. You know that one, interlace. Lift the heart up 
and then maybe fold over just to kind of get ready for going upside down. Let the head go. <sighs> Soften the jaw. How are your toes doing? Can you soften the toes maybe? Maybe? Okay, great. Spread the toes, press into the big toe mound. Let the head go. <sighs> great. And then slowly come up. Take your time. No real hurry. No real hurry. What's the hurry anyway? Okay. Let's do warrior two. You know, once I got introduced to the chair, the chair yoga, it's kind of hard to go back. It's like, I really, I don't want to do any standing poses without a chair, personally. It's because I like comfort. Notice my back leg. So as I bring my front thigh to rest on the front edge of the seat, I want to keep the knee stacked right above the heel. There's a tendency usually for standing poses for the knees to move internally. We want to keep an external rotation, more or less. I like to bring that palm closer to the knee and just move the knee away from the front edge of the seat. And then notice this back leg. We did a few um, you know, hamstring opening stuff, maybe will come into handy here. Press into the outer blade edge of the foot. Lift the arch up of the back foot. You can stay here or bring your palms to your hips, or maybe extend the back arm, so the back leg arm, and then the front arm into your Vira Vajrasana too. Just because we're going to be working with shoulder stand, maybe not straining the neck, looking towards the front fingers, feel free if you have the flexibility on your cervical spine. Just go ahead and look towards the front of the mm, yoga mat. Let the shoulders descend. And then bring the ribs in, move. So you're kind of twisting the, the ribs closer to the back leg, towards the back leg. And then lengthen the tailbone down. Firm the leg, firm the back leg. Good. I mean, let's do a reverse warrior, why not? And then three breaths. And I mean, since we're here, let's just do an extended side angle. You could do all your warriors on a chair. So notice, bring that elbow down, let the front chest lift up, lift the arm up, and then extend over. You know, some of you overachiever types like me, recovering type A peoples, you're going to bring your palm towards the ankle and then hold the ankle as you extend the arm over. I have the tendency of crunching my toes. Notice what you're doing with the toes. Relax the pelvis. Et voila. One more breath. Mm, and then come back. OK, how to come out of this? You know, as gracefully as you can. There's no real good way to come out of it. I just like to make sure I'm not causing any strain anywhere. That's it. The other side, because two sides. Big thigh, big front thigh, right over the seat. I didn't give this instruction here. You know, you don't want the knee kind of just away from the edge of the seat. You want the 90 degree <laughs> kind of pressing into the <laughs> edge of the seat. This leg. This leg, my back leg now, I can start firming. I'm going to give less instruction here because you already know. I trust that you know. This time, the instruction is going to be around the pelvis. This back leg pelvis, as you firm the back leg, this is, this is my side that needs a little bit more love, more attention. So I'm not going to go firm, too firm, just because I, you know, you know your body. Go ahead and bring that back or front of the pelvis back. So instead of now twisting the ribs back, you're trying to bring the pelvis towards the back of the chair. And then go into warrior two. And you know, you can also adjust here by bringing the foot a little bit more towards the front edge of the mat or the long edge of the mat. Be comfortable. 
Notice the ribs, are they splaying forward? Bring them in, and then bring the back palm to the thigh, reverse. Now, I was just planning on teaching the warrior two here. Got to get to the bridge. Got to get to the bridge. I mean, I want to cross the bridge <laughs> to, uh, to nowhere. I want to cross the bridge to nowhere. Okay, great. And then bring the elbow to the thigh. You know, again, those of you types who like to get the A plus, not the A minus, you know who you are. Grab a hold of the ankle, maybe. You know, again, that side body opening of the ribs class. Great here. Move the ribs back. Lift arms up. Go, go, go. Bam. If there's any, you know, space for smiling, <laughs> yeah, smile. And, you know, you can just fake it. Sometimes just fake the smile, I guess. And then it kind of changed the, it changes the neural pathways towards a little bit of uh, sense of ease and peace and smile. Love. Okay, great. And then come back. Okay, you know, maybe it's gonna go over 45 minutes, who knows? But <laughs> I'll try to keep it, try to keep it real. Okay, dear friends, let's work on a little bit of like shoulder and chest opening. Even though I don't want to do this, I need to turn my back towards you folks. But before I do that, uh, go ahead and grab a strap if you have one, or a belt. Just uh, go ahead and do a little nice little loop. If you don't have a strap, that's okay. I'll, fi I'll find a way to explain this where it's a little bit more low tech. But if you do have a strap, please go ahead and bring it about shoulder width apart. You can always pause and then come back to it. And then I like to personally sit on a block just because my knees, you know, just <laughs> starting to get sensitive knees these days. Go ahead and bring the inner ankles to the block. Press the block, and then slowly come to sit. If this is too much for the knees, go higher. You can always have two blocks. And then have your strap. You're going to extend. So have your strap on one hand, and then the hand that's free, extend it out towards the side. And then go ahead and Bring the loop to right above the elbow, yes? Extend the arm over as long as you can on that strap, and then pull. You're going to pull the strap. Notice we're opening the front of the chest here. Uh-huh. So as we kind of pull the strap away from the body, notice that back elbow um, moving kind of towards the back side of the mat mm -hmm. or the back side of your room, or really just moving away from your body. Let the shoulders go. Two more breaths. Mm. Good. And then can you find like Shavasana eyes, like already moving towards more relaxed, soft eyes, and then let that go. Your strap over to... Um, the other palm, so the, the elbow that was bent, you know, you should most likely see the, the chest space a bit more expanded for you now. Go ahead and extend. Um, for me, this is my right arm. As you're seeing the screen, it might be the left for you, but the opposite arm. And I go ahead and bring the strap over, loop it over and above the elbow, Look towards the tail end of the strap. Extend the arm as far as it goes, and then bring the palm to kidney. So the fingers are pointing towards your buttock as you extend fully the arm away from body. Let the shoulders drop. Let the abdominal space be soft. Let the ribs go in. You know, feel free to tug as much as you'd like without causing any sort of impingement, any sort of pain, no numbing. Who needs that? Good. One more breath. Hmm. And then let go. Great. 
The reason why we did a little bit of that technical work, friends, is just to get into bridge pose and then bridge into shoulder stand. Now, before we get to the chair, I'd like to show you bridge, how we normally take it. Go ahead and have your block nearby. And again, just have that strap. It's already in a loop, so you should be great. So come onto your back. Have your chair nearby, because we're going to use that soon. You know, you have the option of actually just staying in a very restorative bridge for the rest of this class and not doing any of the other business, OK? So grab a hold of your block. Bring your feet about hip distance apart. Lift your toes, press into the toe mounds. Find some level of equanimity, some weight on the left side and the right side, some sort of equal weight. Lift the hips up, and as you do, you know, notice if the heels were like too close to the buttock. You don't want it too close to the buttock. You want the heels kind of like a foot away from the butt cheek. Push into the heels, lift the hips up, go ahead and bring the block to its lowest height. Friends, you can just stay here. Amazing, lovely, great. You already won. You're winning. Some of you, you know who you are. You're going to lift the hips. Go ahead and bring the block to the second height. You're right around the sacrum, not the tailbone, OK? Now, for a moment, lift the head. Maybe bring the scalp back. Move the shoulders away from the ears. And then, you know, when you, when you go into an interlace behind your back, do you remember that? We did that. Roll the shoulders back. Come onto the top of the shoulder head and shoulder blades. Roll the other side, for me it's the right side, and then maybe bring your elbows down, press into the elbows, lift the sternal notch up. The sternal notch is the front side um, of the body, the front side of the body, where the sternum holds your ribs right at that center. Lift that up. Mm-hmm. Good. You can stay here or just bring the arms down. The whole point of this is to keep the chest broad. Now, as we progress, you can move the block, because this is a bridge to shoulder stand class. You can slightly bring the feet back, lift the hips up, and then maybe try interlacing, or if you have the strap, use the loop to pull the strap, really roll the shoulder heads. Remember what we did a few moments ago, rolling the shoulder heads back when I had my back turned to you? That's exactly what we're doing on our back. Roll, good. Now lift the pelvis high, lengthen the tailbone towards the kneecaps, right at the space in between the kneecaps. And then some of you are gonna play with, you know, bringing your palms to the, the buttock or the low back. I'm just going to try to bring my thumbs to the upper buttock and then lift the buttock up higher. Good. Or some of you can hold the side of the mat and then pull the mat apart. Take a few breaths here. Hmm. Now, if you progress to here and you're like, I'm done, I'm OK, I don't want to use the chair, please bring the block back to your sacrum and rest. Those of you who want to move along on the journey, come with me. You know, we're all going to end up in the same place, Shavasana. If that ain't the truth, I don't know what is. We're all going to end up in corpse pose. So, so you can always just stay in, you know, stay wherever you need to stay. Now, so as you bring the chair in front of you, be very intimate with the chair. You're going to need it to be intimate with you. Have that block. You don't need the strap anymore, thankfully. As you come onto your back again, again, if you're progressing, bring your calf muscles to the chair. You're like, OK, that's good. And then use your heels to lift up. Boom. And then, oh, where are the legs of the chair? Yes. Bring that chair closer towards you. Now, instead of having our feet on the floor, you actually have the feet right at the center of the chair. You know how the business goes here. Roll the shoulders back. Good. 
As you push the feet into the chair, notice how my pelvis lifts up. So this actually looks more like shoulder stand now. Mm-hmm. And there it is. But you're in still in bridge, just a modified variation. Now, if you have any shoulder and neck issues, come out of this now. I'm going to show you how to prop properly to have more support for the shoulders. Give us a moment, we're just progressing here. Push into the heels, lift the hips up, soften the jaw, let the throat be soft. Let the eyes drop. Uh -huh. You know, the minute you let go of the legs, um, it's gonna be a disaster. <laughs> so you really gotta work with the chair so, so intimately. Okay, and then you'll bring the buttocks down. This is why we had the block. Stay here. Or if you'd like to progress into shoulder stand, this is where we're going. But before we get into shoulder stand, here's the nice little support I was talking about. You have your perfectly imperfect blankets. I like to use two just because I have cervical spine issues. So if I'm going to stay in the posture for about 10 minutes, which you can therapeutically, um, shoulder stand is great for the immune system, you know, sadness, anxiety, really good to practice this daily and build it up to a 10 minute practice, just shoulder stand and you're good, you're golden. It's like your mm, natural, you know, upper, it's a natural upper of yoga. So we have the, we have the blankets now. I can, let me just show you how to get into the bridge. Notice how my, the end of my shoulder is right at the edge of this blanket. Take that block again. You might have to move the chair a little bit. And this is why you gotta be really nice to the chair because sometimes they get really, they get in the way. So, yeah. It's a little bit of maneuvering. It's like a dance, it's like a little dance. <laughs> So notice now the neck's not crunching. How exciting. So here, once again, I roll my shoulders back and I'm just using the block to really help me lift up and take off. So we're back in the same posture. We're still not at shoulder stand, but this is a safer way to get into bridge and as you'll see, to get into shoulder stand. Let's take a few breaths here. Now, if you want to stay here, you can. This is, in fact, a little bit more challenging to hold for a long time than shoulder stand, surprisingly. Hmm, great. On the next exhale, slowly descend. You know, you can move your shoulders away from each other. Let the shoulder blades move away from each other. Bring the back of the pelvis, the sacrum onto the block. Great. And then bring feet down. You know, you don't want to capsize onto the floor. So go slowly. Yeah, sometimes you can capsize. No fun. Shoulder stand. Ready? So shoulder stand looks crazier than it actually feels. You know, it's that is that taking the leap into shoulder stand with the chair, once you've got it, you're not going back. I don't do shoulder stand without a chair anymore. It just, um, I care about my neck, I care about my comfort, I care about, you know, just not having to suffer as much. I don't, I don't wanna suffer. If you do, you can take a real shoulder stand. <laughs> okay, let me show you actually how I, it's kind of like, you know, you gotta channel your inner stripper. You're going to lift like so. You know, we get really inappropriate here at the one down dog. You bring your knees behind the bar, hold the front bar, hold the chair, and then you slide the tailbone towards the back edge of the chair, go slow. You're like, oh, now I'm right at the center of the chair. Right at, I'm like, just here's a little knock. And then, I hold one bar. I'm like, okay, is this good? Let the palm go, look, you're okay. 
I'm here. Then you hold the other leg, bring the elbows down, go slow. Boom, I have more support. Now you shimmy the sacrum to the edge of the seat. You have a chance here to roll the shoulder heads back and then boom, you, you know this. You rest the tops of the shoulders on the blanket edge and then this is where we get crazy. We bring the palms to the back legs. Whoa, chest opens, feet onto the bar of the chair. Ah, I'm not coming out of this. I'm not coming out of this. I don't blame you for just staying here forever. Really, it just, it's pure bliss. Doesn't look so, but it is. You can keep the feet stacked on the bar. As you roll the shoulder blades towards the spine, great. You can now lengthen the legs up towards sky. You know, if you bring the heels over your chest, you might capsize. You want to stack the heels above the knees, knees above the pelvis. Hmm. You'll notice how the chin is now touching the chest, the sternum. This is your Jalandara Bandha, it's your throat of valve. This is where the magic of the hormones happen. You're kind of squeezing the glands, the hormonal glands. And then once you come out of it, you know, imagine 10 minutes of just like bringing breath, bringing life force, bringing prana, and then releasing it. And then you take off with this feeling of pure mm, wonderment. Then let go. Release the eyes. Soften the jaw. You can widen the tongue, maybe even just bring for a moment the tongue to the roof of your mouth. The jaw be soft. If legs up is proving to be difficult for you, feel free to bring the feet back onto the bar or bring the soles of the feet together, knees out wide. So you're in Supta Baddha Konasana with Viparita Karani, which is basically modified shoulder stand with butterfly pose. Let the head go. As you breathe in, let the diaphragmatic circumference widen, releasing the grip on the legs of the chair, because now you're safe. You can stay here for one to 10 minutes. Together we'll stay for another one minute before we go into Shavasana. There's often the tendency of contracting the pelvic floor, release the pelvic floor. Let the back of the neck lengthen. Notice where the gripping is within your body, soften. And then to get out of this mess, <laughs> to get out of this pose, bring the knees together, bring the feet onto the seat of the chair, go slow, you're holding the back legs. So now it's looking like bridge again. 
You cross the bridge over to shoulder stand. Now you're slowly lifting the sacrum up. At no point you lose access of holding the legs. At least one leg of the chair must be held. And then spread the shoulders away from each other. And then slowly slide, holding now the two legs without lifting the back of the head, bring a sacrum down onto the blanket, the low back. Let your whole low back be supported. Go ahead and hug your knees towards the chest for a moment. Maybe cross the shins over, hold the outer feet. Great. And then pulling the feet, the legs towards your belly, giving that low back space, some love, some width, some breath. And then switch over, left shin over the right shin. It's kind of like you're seated in a meditative posture. Bring those thighs over towards the ribs. And as we navigated through some standing poses, through some psoas release, through some lunges, notice how the body feels now. Is there a sense of ease or is there a sense of agitation? You know, both belong. Oftentimes, depending on where the state of the mind is, coming out of shoulder stands might prove to be mm, not so comfortable. But the benefits of the practice really remain. You know, no effort goes wasted when we do shoulder stand. Glandularly speaking, hormonally speaking, it is the mother of all poses, the queen of all poses. You know, the king is the headstand. And maybe we do the king a little later together. In a very Shavasana-like state of mind, no reason to move the chair, use it. Calf muscles, really be held, let them be held by the chair. Let your upper body be held by the chair. If you were in any of the other postures, you have met us here, right here in Shavasana. No real reason to push further, no real reason to suffer more when there is a way out of suffering. Find support. Find a different way. Find a way that works for you. Gently blink open the eyes. Very uncommon to do this in Shavasana. Just, you know, as if you're seeing but not really looking. Kind of like just an observer, just seeing it all. Very soft eyes, and then gently bring the knees to bend, come on to either side, going slow, keep the head low, come into fetal, you can come off the blanket, sure. Take one full breath, exhale out of the mouth. And then as you press yourself up to a seat, perhaps sitting on the edge of the blanket, finding, again, equal weight or as if there's some level of equanimity between the sitting bones. If you need to move the neck, maybe moving left, 
opening up the jaw, moving the other side, and then coming back to center. If it feels right, if it feels authentic, to join the left and the right, bringing palms together in a gesture of unity, in a gesture of togetherness, and bowing to each other, to all those who are practicing with us, letting the merits of this practice be a benefit to all beings. I bow to you.